You don't expect collapse when times are bad. You expect collapse when times are really abnormally good. People lack the survival skills and the mental toughness to endure a slight breeze, much less a category five SHTF storm. This is why the collapse will be such a bloody mess. Before we get into this topic, I want to let you guys know that myself, Full Spectrum Survival, City Prepping, and The Urban Prepper are going to be launching a brand new channel this week called Think Preparedness. This is going to be a collaborative effort from all our channels. We're going to be doing long form conversations about all things preparedness. Please go and subscribe and expect our first video to drop in a couple days. The link will be in the description and the top pinned comment. Now let's get to it. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today on the channel, I want to talk about human nature and SHTF. This will be more of a cerebral video. So if you don't like to think that much, click away right now. All right, guys, you're going to have to forgive if you hear some background music. There's uh, some teenagers partying next door. I want to talk about human nature today. And I think it's an excellent backdrop for this video because I've been watching these old uh, refurbished videos from like the 1800s. If you guys haven't seen these, absolutely incredible, the work that they're able to do now. The one I watched recently was from 1897 and it was of a snowball fight. And it was all colorized and it was in 60 frames per second. Now, we live in very self-centric times. And what I mean by that is that we tend to think that we're different than previous generations. And a big reason why is because color television and color video recordings have only been around for so long. And they've only been around in a good enough quality for so long that we could truly see that we actually haven't changed that much. But when you, when you go back and you watch that old rustic footage with all the cigarette burns on it and all the you know cracks and screeches and the really crappy audio or no audio at all in black and white in what, five frames per second or something like that, it's really hard to humanize that. And it's really hard to, to identify with those people. But then when you see that footage in color and then you see it in 60 frames per second, it's incredible how similar we still are to these people. People have not changed. Fundamentally, people have not changed at all. I mean, what has changed other than the fact that we're all carrying around a camera nowadays to take pictures of ourselves? Really, nothing has fundamentally changed. You look at the way kids play. Kids play today the exact same way they did probably hundreds of years ago. And that's a great barometer to see if we're truly evolving is child's play. The life story of people is fundamentally the same. You know, guy chases girl and does all this stuff to impress girl and maybe gets with girl and breaks up with girl and there's heartache and there's this and there's that. The human story hasn't fundamentally changed, but we have this very self-centric view. Each generation thinks it's so unique, especially ours right now, because we have no reference point for the past. In the year 1900, say, okay, when this footage was taken, this 1897 footage of this snowball fight, I'm sure that the people then must have thought that they were different from all the generations that came before, because you had things like video, you had the telephone, you had railroads, you had automobiles coming up, you had electricity, okay? All of these things you didn't have in the year 1800. You had flush toilets, uh, refrigeration. Uh, they were on the brink of discovering airplane or aviation technology, the tanks, you know, the advances in the military. So they must have had the same very self-centric view that we do, that nothing bad could ever happen, that we have fundamentally changed. We have now mastered the universe. We have now mastered mother nature. Look what happened after that. World War I, Spanish flu, the Holodomor, if you don't know what that is, that was the Ukrainian famine in which people cannibalized their own family members in order to survive. There were several famines after that. The Chinese famine was probably among one of the worst. Okay, you had World War II, you had the Great Depression, you had the Cold War, all of these things. After 
Those people who had that snowball fight must have thought to themselves that they had, had reached a certain level of humanity and global civility, which could not be toppled. And what happened? Well, mega death scenarios happened. If you don't know what mega death scenarios are, go and watch my video on giga death, because that's likely what is coming next. Our hardware, our biological hardware hasn't fundamentally changed. Okay, I see these uh, drunk teenagers next door partying right now, and I'm thinking to myself, the town drunkards of the medieval or feudal era were as annoying as the teenagers who are getting shit faced next door. Again, I'm not throwing shade because it's fun. You got to experiment. You got to make bad decisions so you can learn about life. But I'm just saying we haven't fundamentally evolved. But people have this notion that my generation is so much more spiritually and socially and culturally evolved than the last. So most people nowadays in my generation and even the generation before to an extent, you know, they've seen some isolated proxy wars here and there, Vietnam, the Koreas, that sort of thing, but they didn't see a world war, okay? This current generation, gen the millennials, Generation Y, and uh, whatever afterwards, Generation Z, they have no real reference point for disaster. They have never touched a disaster. We are fully domesticated. And yes, I said dumb-esticated. Barely had a hard day in our lives. Now, I know, I know, everybody, it's all relative. There's some people out there struggling more than others. I get it. But most people nowadays, we're alienated from one another. We don't have the community that they did in the 1900s. So all of these things that happen, the Holodomor, okay, World War I and II, and all of the strife and toil that people had to endure throughout the dirty 30s and the Great Depression, in the very least, they were closer to the land. They weren't as urbanized as we are right now. They were more rural. They still had some of those survival skill sets. People still knew how to hunt and trap and process wild game and grow their own food. And they were much closer to the land. So they were hardy enough to survive all that was going to come after the turn of that century. All that stuff I just list off, they were tough enough to survive it. And of course, millions upon millions of people died throughout that period of time, like hundreds of millions of people. Everybody thinks that their software is somehow superior to their hardware. Their software, I mean, their cultural indoctrination. We've been encultured to believe that we are more evolved, that we are more uh, socially aware and socially conscious and we're more uh, social justice oriented and everybody's just more peaceful by nature now. That this new age software, which has just emerged in the last 50 years, somehow trumps the primal body which existed hundreds of thousands of years before that. Somehow overrides all of that. Okay, we have this very conceited notion. The hubris to think that a program that you download on your computer can actually somehow change the hardware of your computer itself. That is essentially what that amounts to, that line of thinking. But here's the really, really, truly scary part of all of this, okay? People nowadays, well, for one, there's five times more of us than there was at the turn of the 20th century. People are more alienated now than ever before. We don't have that sense of community that people did back then when they were predominantly living in rural communities. Now we're all urbanized, crammed into these uh, skyscrapers, living on top of each other. We have less exposure to that type of adversity that would be required to weather a storm of a magnitude that we talk about on this channel with these catastrophic events that might come to pass. And most importantly, people lack the survival skills and the mental toughness to endure a slight breeze, much less a category five SHTF storm. You know, I heard on the news the other day, these doctors are threatening to leave uh, the province because it's getting hard. Okay, because there's uh, more patience now than there was before because of the thing that's going around, right? So they want the more draconian measures imposed on the population into perpetuity to make their job easier. And I'm just thinking to myself, you know, I wonder if uh, African kids working in a sand mine, you know, I wonder if they have that option, you know, to have society 
uh, move for them so that their job can be easier. This is the entitlement world that we live in today. Now on the flip side of this, and the reason why The Purge or The Forever Purge, I just watched that movie the other day and wow, that was a doozy. Probably too much political undertones with that one for my liking. But the reason why The Forever Purge is possible is because people have been so desensitized to violence and we've been so a distance from it that I think when we're finally faced with our own mortality, like a dumbfounded domestic animal that wouldn't know what to do in a situation like that, has no sense of community, would probably just be highly reactive and more volatile than even the worst, most primitively ingrained animal that was just out there. What I'm talking about is like a Lord of the Flies type situation, okay? Now some people will say, ah, Lord of the Flies, that's not really what's gonna happen. Human nature is different. It depends on the context and the circumstances. I understand that. Lord of the Flies, if you don't know, it's a story about a bunch of kids that get stranded on an island and they basically revert to a dog-eat-dog -dog form of primitivism where it's every man for himself and they start killing each other and it basically becomes this unruly fight for survival which is governed by mob rule. I think that if SHTF were to happen you know, 300 years ago, it wouldn't be as bad. People would be more ready for it than they are right now. I think that the schizophrenic way that people are going to approach the situation is going to be more bloody and more violent because of the fact that we've, on the one hand, been so desensitized to violence, but we've never really truly been exposed to violence. Like we've never had to confront it firsthand. Most people have never had to hunt and kill and skin and process their own game. So they've never actually seen uh, blood. People are so far removed from the organic aspect of life that I think when they're confronted with it, many people aren't going to know what to do and it's just going to turn into a bloody sociopathic mess. That confusion could lead to a mass psychosis of sorts. Okay, where all of the, the repressed, especially the repressed sexual energy, because we've been, become such a hyper-sexualized hookup type culture that once you unleash that corralled, tamed, harness beast into a boundless world of without rule of law, I think it's going to be much, much worse than you would see tribes, you know, like uh, in Africa or South America or something like that. You know, I mean, they exist in that egalitarian mix without any laws. And there's not all these neurotic hangups and uh, weird fetishes that we've adapted in order to cope with our modern soulless existence. Okay, people nowadays don't have that nuclear family and that extended family and that community to fall back on. And this is why the collapse will be such a bloody mess. You seriously think that human beings have changed in the last few decades, in the last hundred years? It would be one thing that if we acknowledge this inner beast within all of us, but see most people deny it. And that is the most dangerous thing when you deny what you fundamentally are. Because when you're confronted with it, then you're not going to know how to cope with it. You know, a large part of our civility right now is strictly owed to excess and abundance. If there was no abundance, if there was no leftovers, if we started playing musical chairs, that's when that whole software starts to break down and that's when the bugs start to emerge and the program freezes up and we revert back to our true primal nature which is the foundation of everything we still do and pursue in life all of the young people nowadays who think that they're doing something new and different from what people did years ago no the end is the same. The goal is the same, okay? The goal is to find happiness and get the girl, get the guy, whatever. Okay, that's that's the goal. That's really, that's all there is to it. This whole pursuit of what we're doing strictly revolves around our most primal drives and urges. Advertisers have known this for years, okay? So we haven't fundamentally changed, and this is why people are so easy to control. So game theory would dictate that the less resources, the higher the population, 
the greater the conflict when those resources start to dwindle. It's pretty simple to understand. In times of abundance, we can afford to be culturally liberal. And that would be the natural tendency of things to be culturally liberal. But in times of economic contraction, that's when people tend to become more conservative. We've seen that in 2020 when the riots came to people's doorsteps and all of a sudden, people who were anti-Second Amendment suddenly on the low low were purchasing firearms for their own personal protection. Okay, we see a reversion to these more conservative type values in times of great distress. One pattern which has recurred throughout most of history, all of the bad stuff, the really, really bad stuff that happened, happened on the heels of this great explosion in technology in these really good times, like the, the Roaring Twenties are a great example of that. Look what happened at in the Twenties. Okay, our evolution is a roller coaster. And if stock market crashes tell us anything, they tell us that the crash comes right before, like it's not far removed. You know that old saying, the night is darkest before the dawn? In a stock market crash, the, the crash is so close to the peak because there's a peak and then all of a sudden, typically there's a crash. So you don't expect collapse when times are bad. You expect collapse when times are really abnormally good. That's when you're gonna expect the shit to hit the fan. I'm not saying you wanna be not partaking in the bubble, okay, in some way, shape or form in order to get yours while you can, but just remember that another great metaphor is whenever I'm doing something physical and I'm feeling really, really good, uh, like if I'm doing a heavy lift in the gym or something, that's when I hurt myself, when I'm really, really feeling good. I very, very seldom, if ever, will hurt myself when I'm feeling a little sore that day, when I'm not pushing it too hard, when I'm being a little careful. It's always, okay, it's always when you feel great, when you just feel so confident, and you have this rush of energy and adrenaline, that's when you're gonna screw yourself. And that's the period that unfortunately, a lot of people are still in, even in lieu of what has kind of transpired in the last couple of years, because let's face it, the Fed's doing a great job of keeping all the balls in the air and keeping everybody satisfied, even though as we're seeing with inflation that uh, they can only do so much, okay, before the curtain gets unveiled and we see what's on the other side of this shit show. So I just wanted to talk about that today and I want you guys to do me a favor and go and watch some of these old videos from hundreds of years ago that are being restored and put into 60 frames per second. And it's very important that you watch the ones in 60 frames per second. And just look at the mannerisms of people, okay? People have not fundamentally changed at all. If we could go back in a time machine, go back to 1897, in that scene where those people were having the snowball fight and give them all a bunch of iPhones, you would come back four years later and they would be the same mindless, entitled automatons as all of us are right now today, okay? So we haven't fundamentally changed at all. I've said this before, the paleontologists have known that you could take a human from like, I think it's 65,000 years ago or something like that, and you could raise them from the point that were, they were a baby and they could function in modern society, okay? They might not be the sharpest knives in the drawer, okay? But they could still function and partake in society. And all of their drives and urges, and that's the key emphasis here, human drive is the same. Our motivations are fundamentally the same. Because what do we do? We eat, sleep, and shizzy. And when the shizzy hits the fizzy, that's when it's going right back to the monkey busy. Never was a good rapper. Anyways, guys, you take care. Let me know what your thoughts are on this in the comment section below. And uh, I gotta go see if my house has been vandalized. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.